Um, today we've, we've talked about our experiences of working with SDN for the last three, four years, and so those experiences of, of working in the research community, using SDN to develop new innovative applications, but also looking at some of the challenges of actually deploying SDN within the university environment. Yeah, so we started out by developing a, an SDN application called OpenCache back in, back in 2012, and that was designed to exploit parts of the SDN capability, the ability to redirect flows. And so what, what OpenCache does is it allows flows to be rerouted to actually a more appropriate location. So it looks at characteristics such as uh, load and available content. And so the network then is able to redirect those flows to the most appropriate location to best meet the, the user's requirements. So we had an opportunity in 2012 to refresh the infrastructure in our building, InfoLab 21. And so we worked with the networking engineers in our computer services department and actually used that opportunity to put in SDN capable OpenFlow infrastructure essentially. And that infrastructure then allows us to not only provide a production service to our users, but also provide a research infrastructure so that we can now have network researchers then having the opportunity to use OpenFlow technology on the very same infrastructure that's within the building. And that was made possible through this combination of working with uh, academics and with working with the networking engineers and both pulling together to put that infrastructure in place. So we started um, in 2012 with a procurement exercise. So we looked at a range of OpenFlow capable switches. And again, working with our networking engineers, we evaluated um, those, those switches from a performance perspective, but obviously also from various characteristics that are important to the networking engineers within our university. And so ultimately through collaborating with them, we identified a, a set of switches that was appropriate for our, for our requirements. Well, there's a, there's a, there's a long catalogue. Uh, really what we're looking at is the ability to use the SDN technology to do real world work. And the examples we talked about were a couple. The first one is a well-known case, which is what's called BGP peering. And BGP peering is something that large core routers do very well today. Um, one of the classic aspects of that problem is that you have a huge number of routes. It's around about half a million at the moment and the way that an OpenFlow system works, it needs to have the ability to hold all of those routes. And OpenFlow systems today typically hold many, much fewer than that. There's some new equipment coming that can do it a lot better, but we didn't have access to that for our experiments. Well, essentially for that experiment, we didn't overcome them at all. Um, really what we're doing is we're probably trying to find uh, applications which do work on the systems we've got. And so really essentially you get to the point where you said, we've given that a try and if it works, then you keep going and you, explore in more detail and if it doesn't work particularly well you say well we've got to stop here because this kit's not good and so then you go back to the market and try and find uh, another piece of equipment that might do the job better um, but it's really yeah. So we've got uh, an infrastructure deployment within the School of uh, Computing and Communications which is it, it's there it's running it's carrying all of the traffic for um, the students and the staff um, and optionally we can move that into our own test environment and right now we have a very small number of ports um, but what we're hoping to do is get to the point where a significant number perhaps of the research community would volunteer themselves as guinea pigs for us to use that. Um, so we've got everything in place to do that right now and really it'd be a question of going to them and saying well we think we're ready for you but in some ways we're more interested in doing more experiments to do variations on a theme rather than getting lots of people on board. Um, so I would guess that um, we'll probably carry on doing it that way for a while. But you know, it might be we might say that for the month of April in 2016, we'll we'll try and take, you know, a third of, of all the users. That would be a, a great thing to do, and I think we'd learn a lot from that. At the moment, if you connect to the network in the uh, computer science building, then there's one network, and you get to see all the services, all the servers, and all the rest of it. Something that could be quite interesting is allowing individual groups of researchers to have their own little smaller network where they would see each other, they'd be able to connect to machines other people couldn't connect to. So that's what you might call a VPN. And that's, that would be a, a typical, very simple, small application, but it's not a standard way that a bridge works today. It's, it's not a concern at all in the sense that, um, I mean, I guess our view is almost a philosophical one, which is that the only way that um, SDN will ever take off is by breaking that lock-in uh, and, and you know the analogy we make is with the computer industry and it took 20 to 30 years for that breakage to happen I think we'll break the lock after a while but the consumers will break it they will not live with the constraints 
and we'll find that the agility to do lots of interesting things just won't arrive because if, if you're waiting for your switch vendor to implement all of the features you want it's never going to happen because that means you'll have 10 copies of every, every new app so it's going to happen the only question is is, is, is when